In this example, we're going to look at how to create a optimized digital circuit to implement a particular operation. So for this operation, on the left here, we're showing a truth table that shows the operation that we want to implement. You might either be given this truth table or you might develop this truth table based off of some specification off of the function that needs to be performed. And in this operation, we can see that we have four inputs, A, B, C, and D and two outputs, X and Y. And this truth table is showing the desired output value for all combinations of A, B, C, and D for each output X and Y. So while there are different ways we can create an optimized version, a classic way is to use a Karnaugh map or a K-map. So we're going to show two K-map maps here, and now we need to fill these in. And so we're going to concentrate first on the output X. So we're gonna make this left K map here for X and I'm going to label it such that the vertical sets of values are for A and B and the horizontal are for C and D. And now we need to go about filling in this K map. And so given how I've done this or labeled this, I tend to like to do this either a row or a column at a time. Given that AB is on the vertical, we're going to do this a row at a time. So the first four entries of the truth table correspond to the first row of this K map. So in this case, they're all zero. So we'll fill in zero, 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 zero. For the next one, it's a little bit more interesting. For the first one, zero, one, zero, zero, we've got a one. For the next entry in this set of four, we've got a zero. Now for zero, one, one, zero, noticing that we're going not to the next block, but to the far right one, we have a one. And then finally, for the last one in this row, we have a zero. So going to the next set where A and B are one zero, we're going to the bottom row of our K map. And so to start filling this in, we have one one and then zero one. And then finally going to the last set of values in our K map when A and B are one and one, we're going to have one one and then one zero. And then switching over to Switching over to Y, we can look at the same thing. We're gonna do A and B and C and D. We'll fill this in a little bit faster here. So looking at the first row, we have zero, zero, one, run. For the next set, for the next row, we have one, zero, one, zero. For the next set of four, for the bottom row, we have all zeros. And then finally, for the last set of four, we have one, zero, one, zero. And so we now have our two K maps and now we want to find what is a minimal covering for these. And so we're gonna look for the largest blocks that we can circle here. So for X, we can see we've got one that's crossing over this way. We've got a block of four here. And finally, we've got a block of two there. And then for Y, we can see we have this block of four sliding over the edges and then we have a block of two here and in both of these cases we've covered all of the ones and we don't need to make any additional circles because we just be repeating things that we already have captured so now that we have our k maps complete we want to create the logic equations for these because this will make implementing the logic circuit after this easy and so for x we can say looking at the bottom left square we can see that a is must be one in this case and then in the horizontal c must be zero so we'll have a and not c we also looking at the other two by two block have a case where b is always true or one and where d must be zero so we've got a not d and then finally for the one by two we've got a is true b is false and D is true, so we have A not B and D. And then for Y, we've got the same B and not D term we had for X, and then we've additionally got the one by two term where we've got not A, not B, and C. We're now going to create a digital circuit that implements this, and depending on what your expectations are you might do this in slightly different ways, especially in terms of how you deal with the negated terms. I'm going to keep this simple and just draw the negated terms, assuming they're produced somewhere else. But 
If you want to be more complete, you might need to draw the not gates for that. And so to start off with, we can have our first term A and not C. For our second term, we'll have B and not D. And then finally for our third term with three inputs, we have A, not B, and D. And we would connect these all together to an OR gate. And this would generate X. And then for Y, while we could just create two gates for the two different terms we have, we can also notice that Y is using B not D just like X was. So we could actually pull out this B not D if we wanted to be slightly more efficient. And then we only need one additional AND gate here where we will feed it in the terms not A, not B, and C, and this would produce Y. And we might be done at this point. Uh, one potential next step might be to look at the relative overhead of this implementation. So what are the number of gates that are needed? So we could see in this case, we need four AND gates in total, of which we have two two input and two three input gates. We have two OR gates, one is which is a two input and one of which is a three input. And then we also have to remember that to create these negated inputs, we might need to account for the inverters or the NOT gates here. And so we see that we use inverted versions of all four inputs, A, B, C, and D. So we might need to account for that with four NOT gates.